This has been a pretty good tomato year on our farm, but the season is coming to an end. You know what's not coming to an end? The challenges that we're facing with climate change. And farmers are on the front lines. They're on the front lines because we are the most impacted, whether it's the excessive droughts, the flooding, the excessive rainfall, the wildfires. All of these are felt on the farms and they can impact our ability to grow plants and ability to feed the country in a whole variety of ways. That's why I wrote the Agriculture Resilience Act, because I want to talk about the partnership that we can have between farmers in this country and reducing the impact of climate change. This bill aims to reduce agriculture emissions by 50% before 2030 and to achieve net zero emissions by 2040. I've divided it into six sections and let me just describe briefly what they do. Improving soil health is number one. A lot of people don't understand that you can sequester a tremendous amount of carbon in the soil. In fact, most people think, well, to get rid of carbon in the atmosphere, we just plant a tree and stop raising meat. It's not that simple. And in fact, while forests are a very important part of sequestering carbon, you can hold so much more carbon in the soil. But good soil health practices are critical. No-till agriculture, using more organic matter, um, cover crops. There's a lot we can do and a lot that the USDA and current programs can to support to get farmers to do even more of that, including, including them in carbon markets. So that when farmers use good practices, they're rewarded by measuring the amount of carbon in the soil and actually earning for that. Another important thing to do is to protect existing farmland. You know, every time we convert a farm to some kind of other use, not only are we losing opportunities for that soil and those plants to sequester the carbon, but we're turning it into pavement, to houses, to far more uses um, of fossil fuels than we had before, and we're just adding carbon to the atmosphere, so we're going in the wrong direction. One more way we need to protect farmland besides good easements and government programs is to make sure farms are viable. Good marketing programs, helping small to medium sized farmers with the infrastructure they need, whether it's to slaughter animals or to process their vegetables to get everything they raise to market. That brings me to supporting pasture-based livestock systems. You know, there is a huge difference between grass-fed animals and those that are raised in industrial farms and feedlots. When you have an animal on a permanent pasture, You've got that grass living there sequestering carbon and the animals working in concert with you to create a perfect ecological system if you're balancing the number of animals on the land and you're making sure you're growing the right types of grasses. We need to have better standards for what is grass-fed beef and we need to support the farmers that are doing that and have much more of our animals raised that way. Reducing food waste is an issue I've been working on for a long time. It's kind of shocking to believe that there is more than 30% of the food in this country is wasted, particularly when we, have, when we have people who are going hungry every day. This can be food that isn't harvested on the farm, lost in transportation, bad refrigeration, uh, lost in, the, in our supermarket change, lost because of some of our regulations in the home. It, it, it's lost everywhere. Uh, and we have to try to stop that. We have to reduce the amount of food that's waste, get more on the tables of hungry people. And when it can't be salvaged, we have to turn it into compost or use it in a biodigester because food that ends up in a landfill turns into methane gas, uh, which is just one more deadly gas in our atmosphere and totally unnecessary. We wanna boost the investments for on-farm energy initiatives. You know, farmers themselves would like to use more renewable energy and there's a a variety of ways we can do that. Solar panels on the barn, maybe to heat your water when you're uh, cleaning up on a dairy farm, more wind energy, um, biodigesters to use some of the waste, manure waste and food waste that gets produced on a farm. There's a variety of things we can do and we need to support farmers to do more of that. That will have them using less energy. And lastly, it's just increasing research. You know, we can't accomplish big things if we don't do a lot of studying about it. And we've been locked in a lot of uh, old time thinking about how we should go about farming. Now, believe me, some of the old time thinking is great. And I'm a very strong supporter of organic farmers and all the work that we've already done. But we've got to change from industrial agriculture to moving to, into agriculture of the future. We need research to do that. We need on the ground assistance and technical assistance for farmers to convert. These are things that we've been able to do for, for decades. We just not need to point them in the right direction. We have to have a commitment to reducing our greenhouse gases, to understanding how farmers can be our partners and work together on it.